I am here to tell you all the secrets about the amazing, beautiful, complicated peacock. Now, I'm sure you remember at some point in your education learning that the peacock's astonishing plumage is all about attracting a mate. And it is. The more eye spots it has on its tail and the brighter the blue feathers on its neck, the more likely it is to attract and mate with a peahen and pass along the genes for lots of eye spots on the tail and bright blue feathers. It's called sexual selection. It's part of evolution. But it's actually a little bit more complicated than that because the same beautiful plumage that attracts the peahen also attracts predators. That bright blue plumage on the neck makes the peacock incredibly easy to see. And that long, awkward tail makes the peacock incredibly easy to catch and to kill. So why hasn't evolution resulted in little short, simple tails and dull brown or dull gray feathers instead? It's confusing, right? I'm getting to the arts, I promise. So what scientists now understand is that it isn't the beauty of the plumage that attracts the peahen. The peahen has this intuitive sense that if that guy can survive having all of that, he must be tough. <laughs> Whether he is or not, it doesn't matter. She believes he is. The, the plumage is just a show of the peacock's strength and vitality. And this is where we connect to the arts because I believe the arts are a community's show of strength. The health of the arts ecosystem in a community is indicative of the overall robustness and vitality and strength and health of that community. The arts are our show of strength. They make us look good. They make us look so good, they literally help us survive evolutionarily and build and expand and grow our communities. So, if a healthy arts ecosystem is that important to us, to our very survival, we ought to be able to find a way to measure, to know whether we are really healthy, like we think we are. In a peacock, that's actually rather easy to do. You can count the spots. If a peacock does not have at least 120 spots on its tail, it doesn't get to mate, period. The more spots it has above 120, up to the maximum, which is about 138, the more likely it is to mate and pass along its genes to a bigger and bigger and bigger brood. So what's the one thing we can measure to determine whether our community is healthy? whether the arts in our community are vibrant. A lot of people want to count the number of artists who work here, the number of arts venues, the number of tickets sold to arts events, the amount of revenue generated by the arts. And I think they are all missing the point. Those are lovely numbers, and we can learn a lot from them. But the single most important indicator of whether the arts are healthy in our community is the cultural export-import balance. This is the percentage of the arts in a community that were created in and by that community. Now, if you look around the country, you will find that that balance is generally very far out of whack. In most parts of the world, the art that people experience was made by somebody who lives in another part of the world. Now, some of that is actually valuable, right? The arts give us a worldly perspective. The arts introduce us to cultures and worldviews and points of view and ideas that we don't encounter in our daily life. But if you look at the great cultural centers in the United States, the three most vibrant arts communities, New York, Chicago, and LA, they have all managed to tip that balance as far as they can back to the export end of the spectrum. Those are the three most vital and thriving and growing communities in the United States. They are what I like to call peacock communities. They have figured out a way to look really good to the rest of the world. 
So if we want to become a peacock community, if we want to start growing our own peacock feathers, we have to figure out where we're going to make our investments. Now, the peacock invests a lot of peacock food to grow that giant plumage. So where are we going to invest our peacock food, which is, of course, our money? Traditionally, we have done one thing. We have given almost all of our resources to arts institutions. It's a safe bet. They're stable. They're sound. They do a lot of good. They have a big track record. But if you really look at what the biggest arts institutions in almost any community do, they import art. They present art. They do not really create art. I believe that instead of finding the new Shakespeare in another city and bringing them here, we need to start growing our own Shakespeare's. We need to start allocating as many of our resources as we can to artists. Instead of giving a theater, for example, and I come from the theater world, $50,000 to support its ongoing efforts, and then watching as the first 5,000 of those dollars fly off to New York to buy the rights to a play written by somebody who works there, we should give a playwright who lives here in our community $50,000 and say, Keep 5,000, and you decide which local theater gets the other 45 to produce your play. We need to build the infrastructure that allows artists to work here. And if we are going to keep supporting arts institutions because it is safe and we are all careful with our money, we need to stipulate that they work with local artists or they don't get our support. If we do that, we will become peacocks in no time. Evolutionarily successful, growing, expanding, surviving, thriving, growing our communities. Thank you. Thank you.